Hello and welcome back to Financial Madness, where we look at all things personal finance. Today we will be talking about one of two investment products that can be used to reduce your tax liability. Now we won't be talking about ISAs or pensions in this video, because let's face it, these are probably the ones you already know. And if you don't, what are you doing? Check out these videos here. The ones I'll be talking about today are some obscure ones that have been around for a while, but you may not have heard of them. The first one today is called Venture Capital Trusts. So without further ado, I'm Kozana from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. Bah. So Venture Capital Trusts or VCTs were introduced in the UK in 1995, and they were designed to help small businesses and startups get investments from investors, as investing in startups and small businesses is risky. So the government introduced VCTs to further incentivize investors to put money into these companies by offering them significant tax advantages in exchange. So how do VCTs work? So VCTs actually work very similar to funds, which are usually the products pensions and investment ISAs tend to invest in. The VCT is listed on a London stock exchange and pulls money from investors and uses that money to invest in a range of unlisted small companies. This means when you invest in a VCT, you are investing in a basket that holds several shares in various small companies. So there are diversification benefits that come with this type of product, as you're not putting all of your eggs in one basket. Some companies in a VCT will do well and some won't do so well, but overall you are hoping that the group majority will see you achieve a good return on your investment. But obviously this is not guaranteed. As a fun fact, Zoopla, Grays and Depop are some previous VCT companies that you may have heard of and have succeeded in becoming household names. And a not so fun fact is that more than 90% of you who watch my videos aren't even subscribed. So please fix that. Pretty please. Now there is a criteria for companies to be part of a VCT, and that depends on the company size, it must have assets of 15 minutes or less, its age, seven years old or less, and how many people it employs. But it is worth saying that there are exceptions to some of these rules. Now investing in a VCT is risky given the nature of these businesses, but here are some tax incentives that you get for investing in one. So number one is that you can claim up to 30% income tax relief of up to £200,000 per tax year. Let's focus on this point in a bit more detail just to give it some extra clarity. Let's say a person earns 55k a year from their main job. So that puts them in the higher rate band at a 40% tax rate and they would be subject to paying around £9,432 in income tax for that year. Now let's say that they decide to invest £10,000 in a VCT they can claim up to 30% of their investment as a tax relief. 30% of £10,000 is £3,000, which means they reduce their income tax bill from 9,432 to 6,432. Now this is a great saving and it's almost fair to say that when you invest in a VCT, you initially achieve a 30% return on your investment as that tax relief you obtain will mean more money will be sent to your bank account rather than to HMRC. Now, obviously, depending on the performance of the VCT and its fees, that true return will vary and can be negative as well as positive, but it is a fair point to consider nonetheless. Now, there are exceptions because remember, it is up to 30% tax relief. So when can you not go up to this amount? Well, the first scenario is, is that it's very dependent on your tax band. If your income tax rate is below 30%, then you will be limited to that amount instead. So if you were a basic rate tax holder at 20%, you would be limited to claiming tax relief at 20% rather than 30%. If you earn less than the personal allowance, then you don't get any tax relief at all. And the second scenario depends on your income tax bill as well. So let's say in my previous example where we earned 55K per year and our income tax wasn't actually 9,432, but 2,500 pounds instead, just for argument's sake. So that means that the income tax relief on our VCT would be more than our tax liability that we pay. And this obviously isn't going to be allowed. So we would be restricted to 25% tax relief as we are bound by this 2,500 pounds income tax bill as a limit. Moving on to the second tax benefit, and that is when you have ordinary shares in a VCT, any dividend earned by that VCT is not subject to any dividend tax whatsoever. For most cases, VCTs offer ordinary and preference shares. Now these tax benefits only come into play if you hold ordinary shares and not preference shares. The key difference between these two is that preference shares get first dibs on a dividend payout. And if the company goes bust, 
they also get first dibs on the capital distribution of that company compared to someone who only has ordinary shares. And lastly, when you want to sell your VCT and you do indeed make a profit, any capital gains you make on ordinary shares will not be subject to capital gains tax either. Again, just like the dividend tax advantage, you need to be holding ordinary shares rather than preferred shares. So those are the three main tax benefits of a VCT, but there is one restriction you need to abide by to ensure that you obtain this relief. And that is that you need to hold your VCT shares for at least five years. The five year period is counted from the date the shares were acquired. Selling your shares less than five years in can mean the following. Number one, loss of income tax relief and the potential for recapture of tax relief as well. So because you can claim tax relief during the same year your investments were made, which does mean you can quickly see the benefits of the tax relief before the five year mark. So if you do end up selling within those five years, not only do you lose the right to tax relief in that tax year, but HMRC does have the authority to recapture any tax relief you previously claimed. And they do this by adding it to your taxable income. And number two is that again, the same concept applies for capital gains and dividend tax. To avoid these taxes, you do need to hold these shares for five years or more. Otherwise you will be charged tax if you are applicable. So how do you claim the income tax relief? According to the government website, you should claim income tax relief in your self-assessment tax return for that tax year in which your shares were issued. Now I am actually in the process of making a video on self-assessments and how to fill it in, which when ready will be linked here. Otherwise, I would highly recommend you speaking to an accountant if you have one or reaching out to HMRC directly for some guidance on how to do this. So how can you invest in a VCT? So just like with regular investing, various platforms offer venture capital trust products as part of their offerings. Some key ones to point out is Octopus Investments, Hargreaves Lansdowne, Wealth Club and Best Invest. Now, before we do get into this, I do want to say that VCTs are not cheap. If you look at an index fund where you can easily find charges of less than 1%, I would say on average, VCTs offer an annual charge of 2 to 3%, which is actually staggering. Especially when you consider they tend to add additional charges on top of this, which can see your annual charges actually go up to 6 to 7% instead. Let's take a look at Octopus Investments and one of their VCTs called the Octopus Apollo VCT. Now, if we head over to their page, we can see that this VCT invests in higher risk, smaller businesses that have already brought their product or service to market successfully. And this portfolio currently holds around 45 companies. Then it goes into reasons why to invest. You have growth, diversification and tax relief as some of the benefits. And then on the flip side, any risks to bear in mind, which generally focus on the volatility of small businesses. Now, if we look at the performance of this VCT, we can see that the first two year results were pretty meh, with an annual return of minus 0.8, which meant it made a loss, and 3.4% in 2020. But since then, it has actually been making a solid annual return of over 10%, with a dividend yield also never falling below 5%. Now, looking at the fees, these are extremely expensive, like I said earlier. This one, you're looking at around 7.5%, plus the occasional performance fee of 20% if your investment is doing particularly well, which is just crazy to me. So this moves me on to my last thought, which I also touched on earlier. Is it worth it? Now, if your VCT doesn't do particularly well or the fees are too high, the 30% income tax relief you get from investing in a VCT becomes your default gain or growth in that sense. So even with a poor performance or expensive fees, you do have a buffer of protection before you actually go into the red. But again, every individual's tax situation will be different. So work out for yourself how risky of an investment this opportunity is for you. Because what we don't want to be doing is choosing an investment purely because of the tax advantages it offers us. We need to be smart and understand all the aspects of a VCT and then make an informed decision from there. Cool, so that is it for this week's video. Next week, I will be speaking about a different tax investment product for you to sink your teeth into. But until then, let me know if you do have any questions down below and like and subscribe. See you later. Bye. Bye.